Hi there, good evening. I'm Andy Savage. Welcome to One Man and His Meeple. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing an unboxing of Pax Pamir 2nd Edition. Um, now I kickstarted this back in March and it arrived this morning. So uh, still in shrink wrap. Um, I first became aware of this game, um, I think when well, I mean, I really became aware of it when I saw a No Pun Included review it about a year ago, and then it slowly dawned on me that it had a solo option. So I thought when the Kickstarter came back around, I thought I had to have a copy. Uh, so let's see what's in the box. Okay, designed by Carl Worley. Um, nice, uh, some component photography on the back. It's 1823, for nearly a century, the Durrani princes held together an empire that stretched from the frontiers of Persia to the Punjab. Now their authority has collapsed and new rivals emerged from the shadows. Can you unify Afghanistan or will you push an unstable region into chaos? I'll, I can guess what I'm gonna be doing. Obviously, Carl Worley is, uh, as it says here, designer of Root and John Company. Um, and this was originally released in 2015. Well, the new edition was released in 2015. And uh, this is the second edition, second printing 2020. Um, now, I know uh, the US have had their uh, second edition copies for some time, but I believe the Euro editions are, or the European editions and the British, the UK editions are just arriving this week. So um, I thought some people might be interested to see what's in here. It says on the box there, one to five players, 45 to 150 minutes. Now that's quite a quite a stretch. I assume it's uh, longer for more players. I wonder how long the solo edition, the solo is gonna take. Let's see what we've got here. Inside the uh, lid, there's a really cool picture of um i really don't know who is who in that photo i know the game concerns um the afghans the russians and the brits so i guess they're all depicted there somewhere that's really nice um we've got this lovely uh the flower motif that runs all the way around the edge of the box and inside and on the rules, which I have been sneakily looking at in a PDF format. Uh, so what have we got? It's about 20 pages and four of those pages is playing with the AI, Wakan, which is what I'm primarily gonna be interested in. Uh, it looks really nice, lots of graphical examples, which is always cool. Nice chart to show how you create the deck and so on. Let's move on. Okay, so it looks like uh, a punch board for each player. With a, We've got a disc and a few counters, which I guess are the uh, rupees. These. These pop out really nice with no hanging bits. Uh, this, this, the big panel here is coming out already. Look at that. That's so nice, just on the back. Are they all got, are they got different? No, they're all the they're all the same on the back, but each of these wheels are different. This all comes out really nicely. See, these bits are falling out already. So that, I guess that's going to fit like that. We're going to have some little plastic bits just to uh, set those. Lovely detail pans just on the back of stuff where you wouldn't expect to see things. Uh, so yeah, we got uh, one, two, three, four, five of those. 
blue, grey, red, sort of a brown and the yellow. Very nice. Obviously I will be playing blue. And we've got some sort of card tableau here with uh, another copy of the board. Well, a first copy of the board on the back. But I don't think that's the copy you use. Uh, these look like player guides. Tricky to get out turn structure and how to win. That's always nice. Just a simple one base sheet. There's a couple of those, not one each, but always useful. And then there is, I like those because I store my games uh, vertically. I like to have the components protected with a nice plastic sheet. Plenty of bags, plenty of zip locks. Seems to be about uh, eight, nine, maybe ten in there. Uh, I'm ignoring the really obviously nice bits for a second. So we've got counters for each player, each player color. and uh, a silica gel which I have to get rid of carefully because of the dogs and this nice tower pawn that requires its own bag and then the score counters have all got screen printed score counters I presume score counters screen printed in gold really nice this whole thing the detail on this is just lovely really chunky wooden counters plenty of bags don't know entirely what these are but more nice wooden counters six different ones of those and they're uh, stained, just stained wood and silk screened. Really nice. I see what this is made of, some sort of uh, resin, I expect. Oh, it's got a chalky feel to it. That's not a normal, that's not normal resin. It's got like a chalky, sandy feel to it. It's really matte and with an inlaid kind of um, woven design. Uh, these will be the clips to hold the uh, discs together. I'll put one of those together in a sec. guess how those go together and break the whole thing. So I guess that's just for selecting your alignment for each round. We've got British, Afghan, and the Russian bear, and some jewels on the side. It's all cool, it's like uh, dune or the scythe wheels, I guess. Okay, um, then we've got masses of cards, more beautiful illustrations just on the backs. I'll open these up. Look at that pattern work and that. That might be the uh, back of the AI deck. Let's open up these ones first. Can you ever get these things to work?
There should be. It must be a pull somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. Looking at the wrong side. There we go. All the way up. So obviously, I've barely skimmed the rules, so I have no idea what these are all doing, but there are dozens of them. Let's see if we've got an inventory. 142 cards. That, that's glaring. So is that. Let's move those. Kabul with blue. These are Punjab. So these different regions, I guess, with different suits, Kandahar, Herat, Persia. Now, I don't know much about this era uh, of history or geography, really. So uh, it's going to be really interesting. There's tons of flavor text on these. So uh, it's going to be really interesting learning all about the history. I love these games like uh, this and the, the sort of stuff you get from GMT where it's, you're actually learning as you play. There are lots of cool symbols on there. There's a knife cutting paper in the Balk Arsenic Mine, Lapis Lazuli Mine, City of Ghazni, Gilzai Nomads. I don't know whether these were original artworks or um, like for the game. Or if these have been sourced from elsewhere. Henry Rawlinson. Army officer, politician and orientalist. Rawlinson advocated for a larger role in Afghanistan in Britain's foreign policy. He served as a political agent in Kandahar and fought in the first Anglo-Afghan war. There lots of Brits in there. Jan Fishan Khan served Shah Shuja and the British during the first Anglo-Afghan war. So, yeah, lots to learn. Seaforth Highlanders. I'm not going to sit here and read every card, but these are fascinating. Can't wait to read all these and learn about all this. Do you ever find yourself uh, immersed in a game and, and uh, seeking out information around it? Okay, so that's the first deck. They are all blue backed with this beautiful pattern. Look at this second deck. So there's mention of a book, I think, The Great Game, which I think details the history. around this period. So maybe that'll be that'll be one to pick up. Where do I read that? Well, Western history is often called this period the great game because of the role played by the Europeans. And on the back of the rules it's got most of the stories about the great game reveal far more about the Western imagination than they do about Central Asia in the 19th century. Uh, suggestions for further reading. That's cool. So um, we have two of these Wakan's priorities and Wakan's gifts and prizes. And so I guess those are player aids. And then these are the, uh, the Wakan AI cards. And this is the rest of the deck, the rest of the play deck. Uh, there's the dominance checks. And oh, what are these called events? But the, that's how you construct the deck from those certain ones of those shuffled in with certain ones of these in piles like you do in Pandemic. I guess most people are familiar with Pandemic, uh, where you create the five, four, five piles with the uh, um, Pandemic cards in.
Transcapia, Persia, nice hat. Strong hat game with all these guys. And these are the AI cards, Wakan cards. Um, so going to be interested. Obviously, they go in pairs like that. So you've got the back of one on the front of the other. Do you remember in um, Tapestry, you have that back of one front of the other? Wakan's actions, tax. If military cards are favored, radicalize the highest ranked military card. Now, I hope this is kind of, I don't really know much about the solo, which I probably should have read about, but, uh, you know, kind of hoping it simulates a, a competent player rather than um, just some strong actions. Okay, I'm gonna have to tear this to get this off. Now this, how cool is this? I only know of a couple of games that have a mat like this. I think is a uh, Silk Road, is that the other one? So that is the same as that. And that's all the regions that we've been seeing on the cards, Transcapia or Transcarpia, Kabul, Punjab, Kandahar, Herat and Persia. We'll get that laid out flat. How cool is that? I have to get the iron on that. So those are the symbols that we saw on some of the cards, I guess. Yep. The eye, the crown, the, I don't know whether it's um, reeds or grass and the crossed swords. And then finally, the last thing in the box, all right, that comes out, that's a tray that comes out. These are, these feel amazing. This has got to be the heaviest counters I've found in a game. over here now so these will be the Russian ones with the with the bear in yellow now I know from briefly perusing the rules that when these are stood up they represent an army and when they're laid down across a border, they represent a road. Again, they're this kind of resinous, resin material, chalky feeling material that the tower was made of. So we have a bear motif on the end. Nothing on the other end, so it definitely goes up that way. And then this checkerboard kind of pattern on each side. They're really nice. It's, I mean, you can't convey the uh, the weight of these, but they are they are like chalks or pastels almost in um, in feel. Not waxy or soft or dusty, but satisfying to hold. Could have been done just with counters, I assume, really, but. So much more satisfying to play with these. Who doesn't like a game with nice weighty counters? And the pink with the lion. The lion representing the British then. And 
line motif there and uh, a sort of knurled diamond pattern on the side of those. And lastly, the Afghan contingent in green with an, an eagle, I presume. And a kind of vine motif on the side of those. Now I just know when I'm playing, I'm going to be fiddling with these like a stack of poker chips. It was so hard in the 1862 video to not fiddle with those poker chips all the way through. And these are going to have the same appeal. What a, a lovely box to open. What a treat. I have no idea what this means, but it, you know. Okay, so uh, time for me to get stuck into the rules here and punch the rest of these tokens and so on. And um, hopefully be bringing you a solo video in the next week or two, once I've uh, worked out how to play it. So um, it's been it's been fun opening this box with you. Uh, it's worth the wait. It's been a challenge sitting here all day, what looking at the shrink wrap box, not opening it, waiting to record it. Um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed this little look at Pax Pamir Second Edition at the uh, unboxing, and I hope you'll join me for a playthrough in uh, in a week or two. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon. Bye.